No, I prefer darkness. The camera can't see if you do that. I prefer. Hey, what the fuck? I'm more connected with myself when it's dark. Oh, Jesus. Get refund. Fuck yeah. Give it to me. Give it to me. Oh. oh, nice. Hi, boys and girls. Hello. We just watched Suicide Club by Shion Zono. Yes, we did. Uh, what? What was that? I, I don't know what to think about this movie. I have no idea. I have what no think. idea. This is wow. This is like if you took Cold Fish and Tokyo Story and Tokyo Story. Uh, not Tokyo Story. Tokyo Tribe. Oh. Um, Tokyo Tribe, which are two other Gian Zeno films, and then like I don't even know. I don't think it, like put I, it in a blender and get it all bloody. And you think it's Coldfish and Tokyo Tribe? Well, I, it has the pessimism of Coldfish. Okay. And at times it has like the colorful like flash of Tokyo Tribe. Yeah. There, there are moments, there are brief moments mm. where it does. And then like which I was not expecting because that seems totally later Gian Zono. Right. Well, I I guess I can agree with the pessimism of Coldfish, but I can't relate this to any other Gian Zono film. Me neither. Not really. I mean, I'm just giving those as, like, close examples. Oh, because, okay. like, I mean, you could see, like, okay, there's the there's the music that comes back a couple of times, mm. and there's, like, the things he likes to do, like, girls taking out the trash, and... <laughs> I don't know that's a thing now. Girls taking out the trash. Girls taking out the as trash. A, as a Gian Zono, recurring Gian Zono theme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I liked it there are things I, I don't like about it there I don't are, understand it which, I don't understand it either like I'm this is gonna sit with me like and I think maybe that's the intention yeah yeah that's the point yeah like what I wasn't expecting was I mean I don't even know if I should reveal this cause like no just like what the movie is. Like, the even the genre of the movie. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's very because interesting. Because I went in thinking this was, like, some battle royale, like, yeah. thing where, like, oh, it's going to be about how they form the Suicide Club. Uh-huh. And it's not that it's at It's not all. that. It's not that at all. No. I was, I was thinking of a comparison with another movie, but I guess I shouldn't... I shouldn't even recommend it until spoilers, just because it's all about the structure of the film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What can you can you even think of anything to recommend that just doesn't like give away what this film is? I just, it's just it feels like the experience of watching this is like something you should go in blind on. Yeah, yeah, I can't recommend yeah. anything. I have one yeah. specific recommendation and another film that it reminded me of. But I can't I can't say it without going into spoilers. But would let's... you would you overall recommend it for other people to watch? Yes. Yes. Completely, completely. Okay. This is, has a solid recommendation for me. Okay, I would not recommend it as the first Gian Zono film, though. I don't think. Hmm. Which is interesting because this was basically international audiences' first Gian Zono film. Yeah. This was the film that put him on the map. And I guess I can see why, because it's so... Oh my gosh. Huh. My mic... We should... Should we cut any of that out? We should cut... Okay, you know, know, we don't... We, 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 we can put a time code or something to skip it. Yeah, okay. Um, 
I would highly recommend it. I I don't think it's the best first Shianzono film. I would recommend something like Tag as the first Shianzono film. Or if we're talking older stuff, Love Exposure. You can't go wrong with Love Exposure despite its runtime. Just because it has enough for you to grasp on. And if you're really into dark stuff, I guess Cold Fish could be a good one too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's... I get the feeling that later Gian Zono films are closer to what Gian Zono it was aiming for. Hmm. Like, with this film, it's, like, because it's one of his first, it feels more messy. Yes. Like, like with something like I Am Keiko, which we, 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 which we watched oh. a few weeks ago, oh. which was made, how, how long before this? I can't say, oh, 1997, four years. Yeah, that also felt messy, but because it was in a style that was more experimental, it felt like he was more in, you know, he was more able to do what he wanted in no. that more loose structure. With no. this, I feel like this is his first time he's... I actually don't know if this is the case, really, but it's the first time he's, like, making a film that's for a wide release that's in a sort of a standard structure. And it doesn't really adhere to a standard structure, but yet it's, like, a standard narrative in the way that, like, a narrative would be a narrative. And that in itself feels like he's still figuring that out here. I don't think this... This, it'd be, I think that's a bit of a stretch. Maybe. To say that this is like his first uh, mainstream film he made for the mainstream, just because it's so inaccessible in many ways. That is true. <laughs> and he has made films like Danger, Boys, Boys Dorm versus Girls Dorm. That's true. Okay. And he's okay. made stuff that sounds... Okay, yeah, this isn't the first time then. Okay, I'll take that back then. That's not really true. Yeah, me. and I don't think... He ever intended like Tokyo Tribe is definitely a film he intended to make for the mainstream because it's a, it's a yeah. manga, mm -hmm. and he adapted it and it's got flair and it's got it's it doesn't explore the themes like he usually does. Uh -huh. I think with Suicide Club he's just exploring a different side of him, and I'm Keiko is a uh, dedicated to a teacher who passed away, so mm -hmm. maybe that was like a sort of inspiration just that one time to make that. Then again, there's a love song, which is kind of similar. But I think he's just trying to find his voice. Yeah. I think he's getting into Yeah, his, that's, that's what yeah. I mean. Okay. Yeah, that's a simpler way of saying what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he yeah, intended for this. I don't. I would be surprised if this got like a wide release in Japan. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, this, I feel like this got popular because of what it is and like what it appears to be. Right. And also probably just by word of mouth, just because it's a really interesting movie. Yeah, very interesting. Like it's, I think it's one of the oddest films I've seen. Yeah. Yeah, ever. It's very odd. It's super strange. Yeah. Yeah. I think okay, I'll keep it vague, but one thing that I'm interested because with all the other Gianzono films, even the early ones, the later ones, the middle ones, it seems like he always has, he's always so strong in delivering everything that he wants to deliver. Uh -huh. With this film, there are moments where I feel like it's they're not as strong. Yeah. And I've never felt that with the Gian Zono film before. Yeah. Then again, but like the earliest we've seen like is like Love Exposure, which is four years after this film. Two thousand seven No, more like six or seven. Six years. or seven? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Isn't it two thousand seven? Well that that's at two thousand two at the end though. Oh yeah, it did say two thousand two at the yeah. end. Yeah. I guess it's the D V D. I think it says two thousand and one oh. at the Okay. On the okay. yeah on Letterbox, but that's probably all. Like, oh, okay, so that's more like six years then. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Love Exposure is two thousand seven. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. Yeah, because even in a film where I think is very flawed, like Guilty of Romance, I think every individual scene though still had that strength that yeah. Gian Zono. There were there were scenes here where I got kind of bored. Yeah. I've never had that energy on Zono. Uh -huh. I wouldn't say bored. I guess I got, I got a little lost and I just didn't. Yeah, there were scenes that didn't work. Yeah. They just didn't work, and yeah. I guess we'll get to them really soon. Yeah. But I would recommend it, but I can't say what other films I would recommend, except for other Gian Zono films. I'd say if you like this, go watch Cold Fish and Guilty of... 
Lesser yeah, if this, is, if this is your only Gianzono film, definitely check out more Gianzono. Mm -hmm. um, if you want something similar, like in in tone, Cold Fish is nice. Yeah. However, it's nice. Do, well, it's I mean, great. <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> although, do know there is a hate trilogy, and Cold Fish is number two in that hate trilogy. Uh -huh. So, if you really want the Gianzono experience, you should watch Love Exposure then Cold Fish, and then Guilty of Do you think the order of the Hate Trilogy really matters? You know, not really. Right. Not yeah. really. But the progression of how they go from one to the other is... Um... It's definitely something interesting to think about. If you're interested in, like, how Gianzono conceives films and just him as an artist. Yeah. Because he... he this The Hate Trilogy isn't something that later people put onto it. It's she on something Shianzono has said. Yeah, it's not himself. like an analysis thing of like, oh, this is this filmer's like right. like this is like no, I intend this to be like a sort of a three film trilogy and yeah. how and how I was making films at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Which makes me think that our next Gianzono film should be one of his more melodramatic yeah, like, I really want to see him melodramatic. In between his hate film like yeah. the earthquake film. Yeah, maybe or the earthquake film. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, yeah, we we're, we want to watch all of his work. Uh -huh. I mean, Maybe not this summer. Look at but... the poster back there. We we love his stuff. <laughs> yeah, we love yeah. his stuff, and we yeah. love to be exposed oh, of his stuff. God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, number, I, love exposures is his number two yeah. film, and one of my favorites too. Mm -hmm. so. Because of some of the ideas in this film. It wouldn't be it would be a bit of a stretch, but it wouldn't be too far a stretch to recommend something like a perfect blue or a lane. Eh. Yeah. I don't see it. We can talk about the connections between it. Okay. In the spoilers. Okay. But I, I guess that's not really a recommendation. Are there any recommendations? It's hard. I mean, other than other Duji on Zono films. Are there any Japanese hard. films? Visitor Q. <laughs> the the style of how okay, so we're unsure if so we bought it on Amazon, mm -hmm. and we're unsure if the quality on Amazon is the quality that it was like originally shot in. Right, because it was only available on SD standard yeah. definition. Um, and but the quality was it looks not very was good. Pretty yeah, less than mediocre. Yeah. However, that could have been an intentional choice. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, but but in terms of odd Japanese films. I think Visitor Q is one that can match its oddness. Yes, yes. It's, I mean, a totally different beast altogether. Um, but in... I think I like this film more than Visitor Q. Even though I have less to nitpick about Visitor Q, because there's you can't nitpick Visitor Q. <laughs> no, you can't. Like, it's so... Yeah, but I like this film more as in... This film definitely got to me more than Visitor Q. Yeah. Did. I mean, Visitor Q was a lot about shock value. Uh -huh. This is shock value in the same way, but it's more psychological. I like, but but uh, there there are thought provoking things, especially for me. Yeah. Be especially yeah. for a certain thing that I, I, I dabble on, okay. which you know we'll talk about right when spoilers start. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Spoiler time. Spoiler time. I don't. Is there anything else? I don't think there's anything else. We. I recommend it. it. I'm struggling. Be I think it's a high four. I think it's a four star for me. I have no idea. Really? I have no idea. I'm thinking four or three and a half. Really? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Maybe three and a half, just because. Uh, yeah, I was dabbling between four know. and four and a half. I don't know. But I had to go with four. I just don't know. Okay. Very well. All right, let's go to spoilers. spoilers. Now, before I forget, here are my recommendations. Okay, guys, this is going to ruin a lot about the structure of the film, so stop watching if. Okay, so. Seven. I've not seen that, but I can maybe see why. Yes. Shit happens, people investigate. Shit happens, people investigate. More grotesque shit happens, people investigate. Mm, okay. And the the culprit is always one step ahead, or a couple of steps ahead. And, um... And then, um... What's another one? I thought of Citizen Kane. Just because it, it starts off with this event, and Citizen Kane is him saying Rosebud, and then it causes this whole investigation. While in um in this, it's the beginning, the big suicide, and it causes an investigation. But that's the differences probably stop around like a third of way into the film because more shit happens in this one. While in Citizen Kane, you know the dude dies, and it's all about his life. But the way the film initially played out reminded me of citizen kane in a way mm. 
just because it isn't conventional. And it leads you to believe, you know, with a beginning like that, that it's going to be like just continuously like that. Mm -hmm. But um, actually, I was I, I took a brief the briefest glimpse of the Amazon reviews and all uh, most of them are really, really positive. But there's this one one star review that said the film really bored them and that it really slowed down after the beginning. And you can totally see why. Well, it's sort of weird because, like, with a name like Suicide Club, that immediately sets up your expectations for something. Mm. Like, okay, something I was not expecting. I was not expecting this to be a crime thriller. Yeah. Not at all. Mm -hmm. I was thinking this was going to be a story about teenage girls who were find a reason to justify suicide. Yeah. That was not what this was. That was not what this, this was. This was a crime thriller. This is a crime thriller. Finding out who's causing the suicides. Yes. That was all what this is about. Yeah. In some ways, there are some moments of the film where it's much less about suicide and more about, like, peer pressure and, um, like, cult behavior and, like, society, like, following other people mm. and... The absurdity of that there's mm -hmm. definitely like a satire to it mm -hmm. um and also like human connections human connections is a big part of it yeah and like pop culture pop culture and too. media's influence yeah on the younger generation yeah yeah subliminal messages which by the end it's, 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 it isn't even clear if it is that I don't understand the ending. The ending makes no sense. Okay, it's obvious that like they're uh, they're like instigating the yes. the violence, right? Yes. To me, I take the ending as like a meta theatrical thing, where it's like they almost step out of the narrative and change their own story for the okay. purpose of like talking to the audience directly. Okay. That's how I took that. Because, okay, that like, makes sense. Because like when they said this is our final performance, I was thinking like, oh, this is going to be like. They sing something about how they're gonna die now, and then they die. Oh no! This is totally. But then, like the totally... credits started rolling. Yeah. And it made and it became apparent that oh wait, this is a meta thing that that he's doing. It's yeah. Like, yeah. But yeah. but while we're on the topic of the ending, what do you think about the last subway scene? Then do you think that's actually? I have no idea. It's so weird. I have no idea. Yeah. It's like, yeah, they've gathered. Well. Okay, first they at the end they make it look like they're all going to the concert and then they're going to die at the concert. Right, exactly. But then that never happens. And then so this one girl goes backstage and then she seems to be in control of herself. So she's able to like fight the system. But then the next thing we see is her being tort being skinned. Right. So it's like wait, is she like is she did she convert over? Right, did she get Or brainwashed? is she like is she brainwashed, or is she trying to go into the system to try and break it? Right, because she had that face of, yeah. like, she was still holding it in. Yeah. But then after that, the skin thing happens, and then the police get it. And we're, you know, that that's supposed to be, like, a new, a, a new batch of girls who do or do not commit suicide. Mm-hmm. And it's revealed at the end that they don't... Okay, how did the cop know that it was her? There was a brief flashback that, like, he's seen the tattoo before. Yeah. But I don't remember at all. I, I... Oh, I know. It's because when they, they interrogated her. When they interrogated her at the beginning. They saw the tattoo they when saw they interrogated the tattoo. her. Yeah. I see. Okay, there, yeah. there it is. Yeah. And one of the posters of this film is actually just, a, like, a close-up of that girl. Yeah, I recognized her from the poster pr later in the film. Which is so yeah. strange because, like, she's... There are no main characters in this movie. No, they're not. Which is why I was reminded of Citizen Kane again. Mm. But but Citizen Kane, the main character was very much Charles Foster Kane. Except he's he's dead. Mm. Yeah, but, um... Also, that girl looks a lot like Yuja Wang, the pianist. <laughs> so, like, all the whole time I'm like, Yeah, go, Yuja. Go, you can fight it. <laughs> Yuja, you're the best. Um... You know, in retrospect, the like the actual Suicide Club, that the, the the sort of punk kids, mm -hmm. that's what reminded me of Tokyo Story. Okay, yeah, the Tokyo Tribe. Yeah, yeah, Don't Tokyo say Tokyo Tribe. Story. No, 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 wrong film, to wrong film. Totally different film. <laughs> totally different film. No, yeah. Nothing like this. Um, Tokyo Tribe. Yeah. yeah, with like the neon colors mm -hmm. and like the bowling alley and like the the, the yeah. jack shit weird like people in sheets with uh -huh. animals everywhere. Yeah, like that's a sort of like weirdness that seems like it belonged in that film. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
there's some messed up shit. We'll talk to the messed up shit in a bit. But I really li like the punk kid scenes. You know, some things did work. I think the song went on a little too long. <laughs> the song was, was. I was okay with it overall. I'm glad it happened. It's like one of those things where, okay, I'm glad it exists. You can see him being just interested in music. Yeah. Which comes back in a lot of his later films. Uh huh. Yeah, the, um, oh, the stinging kids very much reminded me of Why Don't You Play in Hell. Oh, yeah, the yeah. toothpaste? Yeah, about the toothpaste. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, well, wait, I was going to say something about the punk kids that I, oh my gosh, my, I'm getting really tired. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty tired too. Yeah. I, I was going to say how it, it succeeded in letting me believe that it was actually them. Yeah. Same. And, and, same. but because they were killing other people, I got so confused about what the message of the movie was. <laughs> yeah. But then after it was revealed that they weren't, I don't know, there was something in me that was like, oh, you clever bastard. You fooled me. Mm -hmm. So I was, I appreciated that very much. There's a lot of that in this. Yeah. Which is something that's very Gian Zeno-esque. Mm -hmm. The fool, fool of his audience. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. Oh, if you want a film that fools his audience, <laughs> check out Anti-Porno. Oh, my. Please watch Anti-Porno. We might, we might need to watch that. You gotta time. see it. It's, it's so yeah. nuts. It's like Tag, but nuts. <laughs> and Tag is pretty nuts. But, um, yeah, Tag has a lot of fooling, too, with, like, who's the, the protagonist thing. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah. um, I'm gonna, I want to talk about some of the scenes that didn't work. Okay. One thing that didn't work, that, that be, began by working and then got old really fast the open, yeah that was such a slow wait, wait. opening oh the opening well not like the no 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 not no, no, the no. train jumping no i'm not talking about the opening i'm talking about some something a scene particularly that began in a way that worked but stopped working very soon which one it was the kid with the fucking cough when the first time you hear the kid oh hi there <clears throat> What's your name? Uh. Well, I thought that was creepy as hell. Uh, really? Yeah. Creepy as hell for the first 30 seconds. By the second call, I'm like, wow, I want to I wanna go and shoot this kid. <laughs> I want. To, I don't care about like kid violence in films. I'm usually very sensitive to that. But that kid needs to die right off the bat. Oh my I was God. so annoyed. <laughs> yeah. You don't think... I, I thought I gave him a really special character. Really? Yeah. He's like the, like, he's like the equivalent of like... Like a mastermind kid, Ugh. but he, well, you know what I think about those, right? Um, but that no, oh, but like even this, but like he has a quirk that just makes him like weird, and I don't know. That, oh, that's, yeah, that's I, his I like, little. I like that stuff. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can't do I, it. But but it could have been justified if at the end when she was going down, g going through backstage, that if that kid appeared. Yeah, he never did. Right, and I was never I was so ready for like okay, if if the kid appears, I'm willing to forgive it. Okay. But it did not happen, and I'm like, wow, so is he just this really fucking annoying kid? <laughs> That's who did all of it, just this fucking annoying oh kid. Oh my god. This fucking kid. <laughs> this fucking That's a kid. <laughs> That's a reference to something else. But, um, another scene that did not work. I find it a little jarring, and not in a good way. Well, jarring isn't. But when, when Shion Zono tries to make this a pure horror film. Yeah. The this... first time with the security guard... It, it, it sort of leaned into a trope that was just like, oh, come on, this isn't you. Yeah, but the worst <laughs> part was when the two nurses appeared for one second and then <laughs> disappeared. What that was, was that? That was kind of lame. That was I agree. so bad. I agree. That was kind of lame. That was the worst thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sion's, I mean, okay, I'm glad you've grown out of it and you've made much better films. But like, <laughs> that was so, that was so below you. Yeah, all of that cop stuff of him walking in the dark, I was just like, okay, come on. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, like, this is a lot. That, that was the, when I was just getting bored. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, It's yeah. just, like, sort of indulging. And, the like, second time you like, see him walking spooky, down the scary, scene. ooh. Right, right. <laughs> and then that droning bass that never comes back. Mm -hmm, yeah. yeah. What was that other film? We saw another film with a droning bass that really, really worked. Uh, was it I Am Cake? Did that have a droning bass? Oh, you might be thinking of um, Lane. It might be no something very low, like a film? very guttural. Yeah, that just like creeped up. Oh, I feel like it might be I'm Keiko. It might be Sasori San. Sasori San had a big droning bass whenever shit's about to go down. I think. Hmm. Okay. 
Yeah, I really remember it. like the soundtrack being really good. But anyway, that worked in that, but not in this. That was the point. And we're not going to analyze that because I just don't think that the things in this work. Okay, and I don't sure. think the soundtrack in it really worked that well either. It came off as it really, really... Weak. It was a little weak. I mean, yeah. it kind of had the Gion Zeno effect, um, but it wasn't quite there. Yeah. Like, nothing near what I Am Keiko achieved, in my opinion. And Keiko, yeah. or the love exposures, yeah, or no. the Mahler 1 in no, Cold Fish. not at all. No. Yeah. Um... Yeah, there's that. Okay, I, I, I want to point at the scene where the cop committed suicide because I was very uninvested. Like, I did not get it. Interesting. There was the whole thing about, are you connected with yourself? Which I guess later on, it it was revealed. But why did the cop just... In, did he just see the whole thing as, like, futile? Did he just see the whole thing as pointless? I mean, his whole like, family just died. That's true. So, I mean, just on, like, a logical standpoint, it makes sense that he would do that. Mm-hmm. But, I don't know, I just read it as, like, the philosophy of these killers is sort of getting to them. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I I like the scene itself. I thought it was, you know... It, it, but at the same time, it was one of the more predictable moments, hmm. in a way. Although, there was one thing I thought about when I watched this. I thought about, what if South Koreans directed this? Particularly with old boy because South Koreans have this theatrical thing where they like unleash mm -hmm. and in this film the cop just kind of goes Which is very realistic. I mean, I don't know Maybe it might be really realistic for one type of person But if a South Korean director like Park Chan-wook directed it, he probably would have flung like he probably would have like like did the old boy thing which I won't which I won't reveal. Oh, I know what you're like, talking about. That. Yeah, but like he would go f footballistic. Go 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 have a hallway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just that's just something I thought of. Hmm. That's just something I thought of like wow, this is not a South Korean film. <laughs> yeah. Um Can you think of Those are the main flaws. Oh, let's talk about the fingers. Oh, that got to me. Yeah. I was like, ah, I, I screamed yeah. at that point. Yeah, I was that... surprised you screamed that loud. I mean, it definitely hurt Ooh. me, too. Well, this is, but... I, maybe this is something in particular that gets to me. Just, yeah. like, hand torture is just, ugh. Yeah. That, I thought that know. was a particularly powerful montage. Yeah. Where, like, people were just killing. With the stand-up comedian who stabbed. Yeah, yeah. I thought the entire crowd of teenagers were going to kill themselves in the audience. But it was just that one dude, and that was a nice little twist. Mm hmm yeah. Like, there are many things that work in this. Um, yeah, I, that ending just confuses me. Because it works until I just completely stop understanding it. Yeah, that's may maybe the weakness of this film is that it... Well, I don't know. It's appropriate in a way. Because, like, it's cryptic in the same way that uh, the, the kid band is cryptic. Mm -hmm. Like, it's sort of asking you, hey... Here's the subliminal part of it. It's like the film is subliminal in the same way that, like, like the suicides are subliminal. Right. So on a meta, meta, meta side uh -huh. of it, it's like conceptually. I wonder if there are actually. I wouldn't be surprised if there were actually little clues. Yeah. That Shion's on a put in it. Yeah. Although I it don't. It feels know. like that kind of film yeah. that you sort of critically on like puzzle out. Mm -hmm. I feel like maybe like in two summers where I'm like fed up, like where I've seen like two thousand films. <laughs> on my letterbox. And I'm just like, okay, I don't need new movies. I'm just going to watch Suicide Club 30 times and try to crack it. Dude, that might I, not be healthy. I don't <laughs> think that'll happen, but I can see myself doing that at some point later Jesus in Christ, life. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a very good point with the whole subliminal thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mail me. Da, 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 da. Because, wait, wait. Okay, this was something that I was confused about. The first time... Um, the very opening when all the girls jumped, they seemed like they were conversing with each other and like giggling with each other. Uh -huh. While in the last time, it seemed like everyone was on their phones with the mail me ringtone. So it's yeah. very different. Yeah. Like the vibe was really different. That's why I was confused. I'm like, wait, is this, yeah, is this, is, did anything change? And it's never, it's not, re not really real clearly maybe it's something like when the kids all applaud they like have found their savior or something and that like changes their entire game plan or something like all of this was to like find the one who's connected with themselves or something this is some speculation like i don't know like like that i mean 
that's sort of what that scene read to me but i sort of let go of that sort of theory that i had once like she started to like actually go through with being in the next cycle or ring whatever they call it right the ring cycle no (laughs) no what if yeah the next chain that's what they call it Yeah. yeah What if it's the kid? I th- it would make sense if the kids were controlling the band mm-hmm. instead of the band controlling the kids. Yeah, that, I mean, it was definitely not the band controlling the kids. Well, right. I uh, see, see exactly. Like, like again, like it's <laughs> it's, it's just unclear. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I'm sure there's some like YouTube video out there that like goes in depth and like goes into the ARG nature of this. I hope really there is. Pieces it this out. is a film that uh, like begs for that. Yeah. I hope that someone's done it so that I don't have to when I'm when, when I've seen 2000. Well, given it's like more his more one of his more popular films, right. I wouldn't be surprised. Right. Yeah. Well, um I kind of want to talk about K-pop <laughs> and how it reminded me of K-pop fandom. Okay, sure. Just like <laughs> when they were singing Mail Me. Because I actually just discovered earlier this morning, you know the song that I sing called Likey? Me mm-hmm. I mean, Likey, Likey. I just, just if I read into the lyrics for the very first time. And I could totally tweet about this and be like, hey, yeah, I talk about Likey in this video. But just, just thinking out loud. Your K-pop fans would be like, he watched what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like a lot of them are like really young and they shouldn't be subject oh, to this. Oh, yeah. But I'll, it's I'll, dangerous. I'll, 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 I'll word it in a weird way. But um, basically, the song Likey is actually a very light and playful satire on how people ask for validation on Instagram and social media. Oh, yeah. Interesting. And the chorus actually says, "Oh, like is such a weak word to 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 express how I feel about you, but something but like me anyway on my social media and me likey, me then likey is that word." That's really funny. Yeah. And there's actually a bridge that sings about putting on BB cream and lipstick hmm. to prepare for their Instagram shoot, their video or their 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 photo. That's cool. Yeah. So it's like a song that doesn't, it doesn't condemn it. It definitely roots for it, but it comments on it. That's interesting. Yeah. So like, you know, especially being like someone who doesn't understand Korean listening to K-pop, just wondering like, are there songs out there that, that do this? Like people have speculated like, oh, if you play this Beatles song backwards, backwards, it's like some subliminal message. Yeah. Like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. Although, have you actually played Revolution Nine backwards? No. You should actually try it. Oh yeah. It's because a lot of the song is actually stuffed in reverse. Oh. So like. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that I wouldn't be surprised yeah, by. I something know, but more not, experimental yeah. like that. Not like yeah. some. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Plus, like, reverse audio. Like, once you've played around with it yourself, you can recognize it pretty easily. Right. Exactly. Because it has a very distinct sound. Yeah, like a it. reverse piano yeah. has a very distinct. Oh sound. yeah. Yeah, the rever- a reversed voice has a very distinct Oh, that's true. Too. Oh, yeah. yeah, reverse guitar, which mm-hmm. Beatles basically invented, kind of. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, K-pop. I just, I just drew that connection, and I'm like, wow. I mean, I'm going to think about this for a while. Just, like, ponder mm. on the fact that, you know. Mm. I see why you would say Perfect Blue now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's specifically mm-hmm. that aspect. And how the website works. Mm. And how, like, the dots keep on appearing. I see, I see, yeah. Yeah. Huh. And to a way lesser extent, Lane. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. I'll, I'll see it. Okay. I'll see it. Okay. Okay. Okay, I think that's Suicide Club. I think that's Suicide Club. Yeah. I'm glad we watched it. Me too. <laughs> yeah. I've been wanting to watch this for a while. Uh-huh. Yeah. We did it. We did it. Uh, <sighs> oh, my God. All right. All right. Oh, actually, <coughs> right before we leave, I, I just thought of a scene that I kind of wanted to talk about. Oh. This just happened. Okay. I think one of the most effective scenes, and the one that's most reminiscent of later Gianzono, was the scene on the roof where the kids jump. That mm, entire way yeah. that they... Pl- that was gripping. Yeah. I like that. yeah. The way they, they, you know, the light tone with the heavy subject matter, mm-hmm. that's totally something he would do later. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. with the camera work, the one take... I mean, in here it's a little more, it's a little more like low budget looking, mm-hmm. but it's not, 
unlike something like mm -hmm. like love exposure even the opening if you remember the opening of tokyo tribe is this one long take that starts from this one building oh, and yeah. goes onto the street and lifts up yeah. it's like something yeah. like that mm -hmm. you know like a low budget one take hmm. yeah i just wanted to point that out i think that's probably the scene that reminded me of later Gianzono the most i can see that yeah yeah okay guys that's the that's now it's really goodbye time goodbye time it is goodbye time <clears throat>